So according to special relativity, moving clocks tick slower. So if you leave your twin on Earth and you travel all across the entire universe or galaxy at near light speed, then your clock should be ticking slower than your twin's clock, at least from your twin's perspective. And thus, when you come back to Earth, as 50 years might have gone by for your twin, it's possible that only one year has gone by for you because your clock ticked slower. And thus when you come back to Earth, you should be younger than your twin, right? Well, let's see what happens now if we reason from your perspective. From your perspective, it is your twin's clock that's moving at very high speed and thus ticking slower. So, by the same argument as earlier, we should conclude that your twin will be the younger twin. So, what's the catch here? One partial answer as given by Physics Girl in this great video on special relativity is that if you've traveled around the universe, you had to decelerate your ship and then accelerate again. So, special relativity does not apply to your frame of reference, and thus our second reasoning fails. But in general relativity, because space-time is curved, it is actually possible for your ship to travel across the entire galaxy and then come back to Earth without any acceleration. Here's a possible example for that. Leave the Earth at near light speed and then turn off the engine of the ship. Then, you might still get to orbit the galaxy and thus hundreds of thousands of years in the future, you might meet again the trajectory of the Earth. And yet all along, no force has ever been acting on you. Not even gravity, because gravity is not a force. But then, what's going on when you come back to the Earth? Will you be younger than your twin? The answer lies in the metric of space-time. As I said in a previous video, since time always flows, we are always moving through space-time. We all follow our space-time trajectory. Now the rhythm at which time flows then depends on our space-time trajectory. It turns out that straight lines in space-time, which are the ones we follow if we undergo no acceleration, locally maximize time. Now the meaning of this is a bit tricky. Consider a straight line trajectory through space-time and let's perturb it slightly, except for the starting and the end points. Then, the amount of time that has passed along the slightly perturbed trajectory will always be smaller than along the straight line trajectory. In some sense, by not following the straight space-time trajectory, you take longer steps within space-time at every second. And thus, it takes you less time to get from the starting point to the end point. So what's going on now in curved space-time for two straight trajectories that meet twice in space-time? Well, it depends on the global geometry of space-time. And that's where heavy calculations are needed. But as a rule of thumb, if your space-time trajectory goes through highly curved regions of space-time, then you get to take longer steps through space-time. In particular, if you follow a straight space-time trajectory that goes near a black hole and your twin doesn't, you'll get to be the younger twin when you return to Earth. Yes, like in the movie Interstellar, you could even end up younger than people you used to be older than. And if you think that this is weird, well, that's even much, much weirder. In 1949, the mathematician Kurt Gödel, often regarded as the greatest logician of all time, surprised Einstein for his birthday with a very special gift. He gave Einstein a new, very weird solution to the equations of general relativity. This solution described a space-time which is so curved that straight space-time trajectories could curve back into themselves. In effect, Gödel showed that Einstein's equation allowed for, wait for it,
Time travel, that's right, if the universe is like good or imagined it, it is possible that by following a straight space-time trajectory on one of the curved areas of the universe, you could end up right back in the past. It's super weird. So weird that Einstein, along with many of today's top physicists, refused to believe in a godlike universe despite its mathematical soundness. And I can definitely see why. It allows for the grandfather paradox. If you could travel in the past, you might accidentally kill your grandfather and thus prevent him from giving birth to your own father. But then you too wouldn't have been born and you wouldn't have come back in time to disturb your grandfather and your grandfather would have fathered your father. And then you would have been born but you would have accidentally killed your grandfather and you wouldn't have been born but then your grandfather would not have died and you would have been born but you would kill your grandfather so you wouldn't be born but then your grandfather would not have died and you would have been born but you would kill your grandfather so you wouldn't be born but then your grandfather would not have died and you would have been born This makes no sense. You can both be born and not have been born. This is why even though time travel isn't ruled out by the known laws of physics today, physicists still reject it, even though a pure logician like Kurt Gödel wouldn't. <sighs> Gödel. Physics is definitely not the only field that Gödel completely upset. Decades earlier, he had already proved that the soundness of mathematics could not be proved. But that's a story for another time. A near future, actually. Hey, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Next time is going to be our last video of our series on Einstein's general relativity. Already, yeah, time is flying so fast, no matter what trajectory in space time we take. Uh, it's going to be not so much about the general relativity, but rather about the shape of the universe. In particular, I wanted you to think about whether you can conceive a universe that is finite but has no edge. Uh, and this will lead us to talk about things like the Poincaré conductor. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment it if you have any questions, remarks, or any congratulations to give me. I'll be happy to read your messages and please share it with people. Please show it to your friends and I hope I'll see you next time.